Gold, humanity's oldest obsession, a metal so rare, so incorruptible, it's been worshipped, fought over, stolen, and locked away behind more security than most nations' nuclear codes. It's said that nothing is harder to fake or more fiercely guarded than a single bar stamped with those four shining nines, 99.99% pure gold. But inside one of America's most secretive gold refineries, hidden beyond layers of steel doors and biometric locks, lies a process so meticulous, so demanding, that even the tiniest error could shake the world's faith in the very foundation of value. Because here, in this fortress of science and secrecy, ordinary earth, dull, muddy, veined with quartz and copper, is transformed into something so flawless it can trigger billion-dollar trades with a single test, and it all begins deep underground. The story of gold doesn't start in vaults or markets, it starts in dirt. The raw gold ore that reaches the refinery arrives by the truckload, packed tight with quartz, iron, and streaks of copper. It doesn't glitter. It doesn't shine. To most eyes, it doesn't even look valuable. But hidden inside these rough, jagged stones are microscopic flecks of gold, sometimes less than 1% by weight, locked away inside a dense, tangled web of minerals. The first step is liberation. The ore is fed into giant steel crushers that thunder like mechanical beasts, grinding the rock down until it's nothing but a fine gray-brown powder. The air fills with dust as massive rotating drums reduce centuries-old earth into something that looks almost like sand. Then comes water, gallons of it, turning that dry dust into a thick, muddy slurry. It's not glamorous, but this slurry holds the promise of fortune. Now comes chemistry's turn to work its magic. The slurry flows into a series of massive tanks where operators introduce sodium cyanide, carefully measured between 100 and 500 milligrams per liter. It sounds dangerous because it is. Cyanide, one of the most lethal chemicals known to humankind, but also one of the only substances that can gently coax gold out of rock. The cyanide bonds with the gold, forming a gold cyanide complex that dissolves the metal atom by atom. It's slow, deliberate, a process that can take 24 to 48 hours as the slurry moves from one tank to the next, each designed to extract every last trace of gold. Operators monitor it constantly. Temperatures, concentrations, flow rates, every variable matters because even a fraction of a percent lost could mean millions of dollars gone. Then, when the gold has dissolved, activated carbon is added, black porous granules that act like sponges for precious metal. The gold molecules cling to the carbon, separating from the waste solution. That's when the mixture is pumped through filters, stripping away impurities. What's left behind is concentrated, 85 to 90% pure, a dull grayish gold powder that marks the end of the chemical phase. But this is just the beginning of transformation. To reach perfection, gold must meet its oldest ally, fire. Inside the refinery's induction furnaces, electromagnetic coils heat the concentrate to more than 1,100 degrees Celsius. It's a mesmerizing sight. The powder liquefies into molten gold, its surface shimmering with traces of copper and silver that haven't yet surrendered. Operators watch from behind heat-proof glass and thick shields as the liquid metal churns and glows like a living thing. When the temperature stabilizes, the furnace tilts, slowly, carefully, releasing a glowing stream of molten gold into heavy steel molds. Each mold is designed for bars weighing between 25 and 40 pounds. The sound is deep like thunder muffled under stone as gold meets steel. Each bar is immediately tagged and logged. The tag isn't just paperwork, it's the bar's DNA, recording where it came from, when it was melted, and the batch details that will follow it through every step ahead. From this moment on, accountability becomes part of the metal itself. The air in the foundry vibrates with heat, carrying the faint metallic scent of something ancient being reborn. Sparks dance across the floor as the operators move with practiced precision, their movements timed like choreography in a ritual that's as much art as science. Every flick of a switch, every measured pour, speaks of generations of refinement handed down through silent discipline. 
The molten gold pulses with a rhythm of its own, waves of orange light washing over steel walls and mirrored visors. The room hums with low-frequency energy from the induction coils, an invisible current weaving power through every particle of the metal. In that moment, the boundary between nature and engineering blurs. Raw matter yields to order. Earth's hidden treasure finally bends to human design. Sensors embedded in the furnace walls monitor temperature and conductivity, feeding streams of data to control consoles that watch every second of the transformation. Even a single degree out of range could spell disaster. Operators don't shout here. They communicate through hand signals, calm and deliberate, knowing precision is everything. When the pour is complete, the room dims slightly. The glow of the molds becomes the only light shimmering like captured sunlight solidifying into form. The temperature begins to fall slow and steady. A faint crackle echoes as the gold shrinks, just enough to free itself from the mold's grip. Steam curls upward, twisting like smoke in an ancient temple. The bars, now cooling on a steel rack, radiate warmth long after the flames fade. Every movement feels ceremonial, every sound deliberate, the heartbeat of a process that defines purity itself. And as the last trace of molten light fades, the bars harden into their first true form, heavy, perfect in potential, waiting for the next stage of transformation. But the leap from rough doré to 99.99% purity requires something extraordinary, electrochemistry. Inside the heart of the refinery stands a row of electrolysis cells, rectangular tanks lined with acid-resistant polymer. The air hums with a faint electrical charge. Here, the true transformation begins. Dory bars are cut into slabs and suspended in the tanks as anodes. Facing them are thin sheets of pure gold, serving as cathodes. Both are lowered into a warm bath of chlorooric acid, held at precisely 70 degrees Celsius. Then, a gentle current of 2 to 3 volts flows through. At this moment, gold dissolves from the anode atom by atom, crossing the liquid in invisible motion and depositing itself onto the cathode in flawless, uniform layers. Every impurity, silver, copper, platinum, sinks to the bottom as a dense gray sludge known as anode mud. But this mud isn't waste. Hidden within it are traces of other precious metals that will later be extracted in separate refinements. The entire room glows faintly blue, illuminated by the quiet pulse of electricity weaving through rows of tanks. The hum of current is steady, like a distant heartbeat, vibrating through the metal frames and tiled floor. A thin veil of vapor drifts above the cells, where chemistry and precision engineering merge in near silence. Operators stand watch, their eyes flicking between readouts, voltage, temperature, ion flow, every number carrying the weight of value itself. The air smells faintly of ozone and acid, sharp but clean, a scent that signals control rather than chaos. The process looks almost tranquil, but beneath that calm surface, millions of atoms are in motion, separating, aligning, reforming. Each second, a microscopic layer of perfection is built, invisible to the naked eye, but vital to the bar's ultimate purity. It's a transformation that demands patience. No shortcuts exist here. The bath must remain perfectly balanced, too strong, and the gold corrodes, too weak, and the deposit falters. Every few hours, technicians test samples, ensuring that no unexpected elements sneak through. Even the light in the room is calibrated, cool, white, and uniform to minimize interference with visual inspections. To an outsider, the process might seem repetitive, but to those who understand it, it's a symphony of chemistry, guided by human discipline and trust in the unseen. The surface of each cathode begins to shimmer faintly under the light. Slowly, day by day, it thickens, layer after layer of purity forming silently in the solution. The gold takes on a color that's softer than sunlight, yet heavier than any glow known to man. It's gold in its most perfect state, untouched by imperfection, shaped by electricity itself. After 24 to 48 hours, the cathodes emerge coated in delicate gleaming sheets, 99.99% pure gold, the kind of purity that no chemical or fire alone can achieve.
These thin sheets are collected, rinsed, and dried before being remelted once again, this time to perfection. Back in the induction furnaces, temperatures soar to nearly 1,200 degrees Celsius. This final melt isn't about removing impurities anymore, it's about achieving uniformity. The gold must flow flawlessly, filling every corner of precision-engineered molds without air pockets or cracks. As the molten metal settles, a hush fills the room. The glow fades, the bars solidify, smooth and unblemished, ready for testing. But even here, nothing is taken for granted. Each bar must prove itself. In the assay lab, technicians in white coats and gloves begin with X-ray fluorescent scanning. The test is quick, non-destructive, and capable of detecting the slightest impurity, even as low as 0.001%. The numbers flash on digital screens. Anything outside tolerance is immediately flagged. The room feels almost sacred, bright, silent, and precise. Stainless steel counters gleam under white light as instruments hum with quiet authority. Every movement is deliberate, every measurement exact. The technicians barely speak, communicating instead through gestures and data readouts. Then comes the fire assay, an ancient test that remains the world's ultimate judge of gold's purity. A small sliver from a sample bar is placed in a clay cupel and subjected to blistering heat. Every non-gold element burns away. What's left is pure gold, weighed and measured to microscopic precision. Only when both tests agree, the modern and the ancient, does the bar earn its mark? Each one is stamped with weight, fineness, and a unique serial number before being logged into global registries that track its journey from ore to bullion. Every bar becomes part of a legacy of trust, but trust alone isn't enough in the world of gold. Inside the West Point Mint, security operates on a level that borders on science fiction. The vault doors here weigh 21 tons each. No single person can open them. Access requires multiple key holders, biometric scans, and cross-verification from control rooms. Every entry and exit is recorded, audited, and reviewed. Inside, the air is cool and dry, the temperature and humidity held constant to protect the bars from even microscopic change. Each gold bar is non-magnetic, traceable, and subject to random inspections. Nothing leaves these walls without verification. Because in the world of gold, certainty is everything. A single impurity, a single fake, a single breach in trust could ripple through markets, collapsing confidence overnight. And that's not theory, it's history. In 2012, counterfeit bars filled with tungsten appeared in New York, so precisely made they fooled experienced traders. In 2020, thousands of suspect bars from Congo turned up with forged refinery marks. And in 2023, Dubai Customs seized over $60 million in gold-plated fakes caught only through X-ray and ultrasonic scans. Each of those moments sent shockwaves through the market. Because gold's value isn't just in its shine, it's in the proof that what you're holding is real. To stay ahead of deception, modern refineries have turned to new defenses. High-frequency ultrasound testing, RFID chips, and blockchain tracking. Every legitimate bar now carries its own digital fingerprint, etched by laser and stored across international databases. This means that every piece of 99.99% .99 pure gold produced in America today can be traced back to the exact furnace, the exact batch, even the exact moment it's solidified. Every ounce of trust or earned, not assumed. And while digital currencies rise and fall and markets fluctuate, gold remains what it's always been, the benchmark for value itself. Its brilliance is more than beauty, it's a promise. A promise forged in chemistry, tested in fire and locked away behind the heaviest doors ever built by human hands. Because when the world wavers, gold endures. It doesn't rust, it doesn't corrode, it doesn't change. It simply waits, not at the flawless, untouchable, eternal. And that's how 99.99% .99 pure gold is made inside America's most secret factory. If this journey inside the hidden world of gold fascinated you, there's a lot more to uncover. The world's most valuable secrets aren't just in what's shown, they're in the processes we rarely see. 
So if you enjoyed exploring this story, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to keep uncovering the unseen with us. Your support helps bring more hidden worlds and untold processes to light.